Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of MSU Inside Out. I'm your co-host, Janie Wunderlich. And I'm Cole Clementich. We have another really exciting episode for you guys today with the repetitive theme of Halloween. Believe it or not, it is already on Monday, so November being next week, which is absolutely crazy. But Cole, why don't you tell us what the preview of the night looks like? Yeah, we got a great show for you guys today. We're going to have Maya stepping in at the news desk. We're going to have a couple ghost hunters join us today for Jamie's yeah. segment. That should be fun. <laughs> We're going to be joined with a Latin Award winning Grammy composer and conductor here on the show. We'll also have Parker previewing some MSC Sports, Hannah with the weather as it's gotten a little bit warmer, and Trevin will be joined by a former MSU comm major. So great show ahead for you guys to watch. But with that being said, Maya stepping in for Wolf today. Maya, what spooky campus news do you have this week? Thank you, Cole. KMSU is putting on their first talent show. MSU's Got Talent will take place November 3rd at 7 in the Beaver Dam. Shields gift cards will be on the line for first, second, and third place, and free food is available with your MSU student ID. History was made at Corbett Field. The Magic City will be home to a new baseball team. Cole Clementich has more on the story. The Minot Hot Tots. It's time to play ball with Minot's newest sports team. The Minot Hot Tots are offering up a dish best served at the Baseball Diamond. The Northwoods League expansion franchise was excited to share their brand being unveiled to the community. A top priority on the batting order was the naming of the team, and the Tots wasted no time getting the fans involved. Uh, we did a community contest where people submitted names for the team. Um, we definitely wanted the community buy-in on everything. So um, we asked people to submit names. We had over 340 names submitted. Um, and then from there, we basically took some time to go through all the different names and choose five that really related back to Minot. So you guys do not understand... With the name and brand all sorted out, plans are underway for roster construction and the debut of Hot Tots Baseball. All right. Well, first and foremost, I just want to thank you guys for being here. This, uh, this we are working on hiring a coach um, and getting the schedule finalized with the league and everything like that. So those are kind of the two big things that are coming down the pipeline. Uh, we will have our coach announced probably, um, hopefully before the end of November, maybe even in um, the middle of November, that'll become announced. And then at the end of November, we should have our schedule announced as well. Reporting from Corbett Field for KMSU TV, I'm Cole Clementich. Minot State University's English Club returns with a new and original interactive murder mystery, Death of the Author. Help figure out who is behind the murder of the famous faceless author, R. Quiggs. RSVP your spots for the November 12th evening show in Ann Nicole Nelson Hall at 6, 7.30 or 9 by filling out the online form. For more information, contact the MSU English Club by email or check them out on Instagram for updates. Lastly, there will be a trick-or-treat event at the Cyril Moore Science Building Monday from 7 to 9 on the first floor. Janie, do you have any exciting plans for Halloween? You know, Maya, I'm actually going to go trick-or-treating, I think. You know, I'm 23 years old, and that's not going to stop me. So I plan to be trick-or-treating. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Co-founder Stephanie Pinky and lead investigator John Coleman are here today from Paranormal Investigators of North Dakota, which I did not even know was a thing, and are here to share with us about their experiences in the paranormal realms. Stephanie, John, thank you guys for being here today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So let's start off by why don't you just explain what exactly it is that you guys do in Paranormal Investigators? Um, so usually um, a business or a homeowner will contact us and then um, like they have some weird things going on, like they want some validation, just make sure that they're not crazy. <laughs> um, and then we go in as, uh, as scientifically as we possibly can and try to get evidence for them. Um, try to debunk anything, like doors opening and closing, like we'll mm -hmm. like go by the door and jump up and down, see if we can get it to you know, open and close and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we kind of go in for validation and search for answers, I guess. Yep. Wow. Yep. Okay. So you mentioned people being crazy. So how exactly do you determine whether it's actually paranormal activity or if it's just somebody being paranoid and hearing just noises out in the atmosphere? How do you determine that? What's the science? 
Um, so one of the pieces of equipment that we use is called an EMF detector, which detects electromagnetic fields. And if you're exposed to high elect electromagnetic fields at a, um, for an extended period of time, sometimes it can feel like you're being watched, you know, the, those feelings of paranoia. Um, for instance, we did one residence where um, in one of her bedrooms, she would take a nap and she would be like, there's always something watching me. Um, I feel like there's someone sitting on my bed, stuff like that. So during our investigation of her home, we took the EMF detector around and we noticed that she had a really old fan that was giving off high EMF readings. So we actually oh. took that fan and put it out in her hallway and then it was, it was gone. So we're like, it's the fan. Probably don't use this fan anymore because it was a really like from the fifties. Yeah, it was really, it was extremely high. Yeah. So like, so that's one instance. So it can be attached to objects. Like yeah. The, or the, it can just be the electricity flowing through objects. Like it doesn't even have to be like a spirit or anything like paranormal per okay. se. Okay. So how did you guys each individually get into this field? Like, did you guys ever have an experience that you thought, oh, I want to like start looking into this or what it is that causes this? Like, what is your guys' each individual um, reasoning why you got into this field? You want to go first? Uh, I had an experience when I was younger. Well, not really younger. I was 20-something. But uh, after my grandmother passed away, we went back home. And we were sleeping, hardly enough, in her bed for some reason. I don't know why. But I was almost asleep and felt two hands on my ankles, like someone grab me oh my gosh I shot up out of bed <laughs> nobody was there it was i just laid down and went back to bed i'm like i don't want to deal with this right now <laughs> didn't freak you out that oh no my. not really wow because i knew it was possibly her so yeah okay so yeah. that's how you got into it mm -hmm. stephanie what about you uh growing up um i've always picked up on spirits i guess um the house that I grew up in was built by my grandfather in the 40s and he okay. actually passed away in the house as well and growing up like we would constantly hear um, doors shutting and banging um, people walking around like moans and the house like both me and my brother both experienced these things so wow. um, it's just to me it's such an unknown thing and people mm -hmm. don't really think about it all that much it's, it was it's always just fascinated me and I have a big love of history as well so okay. that kind of got me into it. Wow. So, yep. Both very, uh, I couldn't <laughs> imagine like going through that, but very cool. So on Sunday, you guys have a panel for paranormal investigators. Explain yep. what that's going to look like, where it's at, what the time is, yep. all the sorts. So um, on Sunday at 6 p.m., we're going to be at Oak Park Theater. Okay. Um, we're going to do a presentation of some of our favorite spots around Minot, and we're keeping okay. it just in Minot. Okay. Um, we're gonna we're working on other panels where like we do like the places we've been to in Williston and Medora and stuff but this one is specifically for Minot mm -hmm. um, there's gonna be lots of Q&A so you can show up and you can ask us questions about anything okay. um, and then afterwards we're actually doing a mini investigation um, tickets are sold out unfortunately already okay. wow um, that's good yep yep so um, yeah we're just gonna be talking about a lot of our favorite places to investigate in Minot in our personal experiences that we've had that's and awesome. the evidence that we're gonna show is like concrete like no no mistake in Oh my goodness. Stuff. So it's not oh. going to be like, oh, like you see this little orb. Like, no, it's none of that stuff. It's like actual EVPs, actual voices, wow. shadows, stuff like that. So it's going to be oh pretty gosh. intense, I think. Oh my gosh. That's going to be so much fun. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us once again. Yeah. We really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Um, once again, that is Paranormal and Paranormal Investigator Stephanie and John. Be sure to check out their event on Sunday evening from 6 to p.m. 6 to 8 p.m. Coming up, we'll have the weather forecast from Hannah and a Costa Rica conductor and composer visiting here in Minot. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you to all of our underwriters. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB, 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports.
Sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, Minot's Music Mix. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions, no job is too big or too small, located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey. Online info at msubeavers.com. Forward communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. My Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. H Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bears Cat Donuts. Located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Hello everyone, welcome back to MSU Inside Out again. I'm your co-host Cole Komentich. And I'm Janie Wonderlich. And Janie, that was a pretty cool interview. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of good stuff there. Was there anything else maybe you wanted to mention on uh, from the interview oh yes there so seven dollars at the door at Oak Park Theater the um, is the cost to get in so you can show up as long as there's seats available you'll be able to get in um, just fine yeah that's one important note we forgot to mention there about moving on from that the weather has gotten a little warmer still mm -hmm. actually gotten pretty cloudy but Hannah what is the forecast looking like right now yeah, well, I mean, I'm pretty excited because it's a little, getting a little bit cooler out and I really like the fall weather. Um, however, it's, the past couple weeks have been kind of weird being really warm and then really cold. And um, so I, I can't really get behind that. But currently in Minot, it is 45 degrees. It does say sunny because up until like 10 minutes ago, I swear it was sunny outside. Um, that's just North Dakota. Um, the high today was 55. The low is 39, so still above freezing, which is really good, I think, for this time of year. Um, perfect, I mean, before Thanksgiving, I think is really good if it's still above 32. Um, but looking at the weather across the state or for the rest of the week, excuse me, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday this weekend look like, looks like it's going to be pretty good weather in the low 60s, high 50s, which is pretty good again for this time of year. Um, a little bit cloudy on Saturday, but a couple days left to get in for those pumpkin patch tours or um, any other activities outdoors that you might want, might want to get in before Halloween on Monday, which again, Perfect weather for trick-or-treating outside or any other outdoor activities. A little bit cloudy, so might want to pack a jacket or um, plan for a warmer costume, but pretty good. I mean, this time of year it can be snowing on Halloween, so I think that 61 degrees is pretty good. Um, however, looking at the rest of the week, Thursday it does look like there is a chance of snow. <laughs> That's still a week away, so hopefully by this time next week um, I can come up here and say that there isn't a chance of snow anymore and it's just going to be kind of cold and cloudy. Um, but looking at the rest of the state, in the eastern side of the state it's 55 in Grand Forks, 52 in Fargo, and then on the western side of the state similar temperatures, 15 in Williston, 54 in Dickinson, Minot also 54, and then Bismarck is the high there with 57. Um, so. Being that it's Halloween, um, I'd like to take you to a fun place in Romania called Transylvania. Um, some people might not know that that is a real place, but it is in fact real. It is in Romania. The current temperature right now is 39 degrees. It's the middle of the night, um, but this is where Dracula has been said to have been from. So currently 39 and dead of night, which I think is probably perfect for somebody who can't be out in the sun. Um, 
somebody who takes undead naps, which is something that I would like to do soon. Um, but um, I'm looking forward to that, um, taking my own nap tonight. But Cole, is there anything that you are looking forward to in this next week? Yeah, hopefully for Halloween, I don't get chased down by Michael Myers because he is just one bad dude. But uh, yeah, moving on from that, he is a Latin Grammy award-winning composer and conductor and will be making a guest appearance in the Minot Symphony Orchestra concert this Saturday. Joining us now is Eddie Mora and sitting in Maestro Amaya as well. Eddie, thank you for making some time today. Thank you, thank you. For yeah, so very fortunate to have you in Minot this weekend on top of the awards and the nominations that you have. You do a lot of things in the world of music. Just tell us a little bit about more your background and what is your day-to-day -day activities consist of? Okay, first of all, I would like to thank to the university for the invitation to be here. For me, it's Fantastic, it's a great experience, and thanks to Maestro Amaya for the invitation. Um, well, uh, my day is uh, absolutely normal, like uh, any musician in everywhere. I teach um, at the music school in the University of Costa Rica. I teach uh, um, com musical composition and also chamber music. And I have a um, contact with uh, many students, and that's very important for me because it's the new energy all the time. And we have the, we have the chance to study um, new works of music and uh, many other things. No, that's good stuff and uh, always good to connect with the students there. So how did it all get started? What prompted your love for classical music? Well, uh, my grandfather was a musician and a poet also, and um, in my, uh, the music was n not strange in my family. And uh, I had the great opportunity when I was a child to, to be in uh, some kind of school of music. And uh, I felt from that time that uh, the music, that I will type with the music for all my life, and I'm very happy to. No, oh, very happy. That's yeah. really good stuff, man. Yeah. And uh, just talk about when did you find out about this opportunity? You know, all that work in the music industry. You know, finding out that this opportunity to be a guest conductor with the Minot Symphony. You know, walk us through the whole process. How that came to be. Well, uh, with Maestro Amaya, we have uh, many things in common. Uh, we are both composers. We are both conductors, and and. Um, we understand that it is very important for our musicians, for the orchestra, to have the chance to know uh, how to play with different conductors and repertoire. This is very important for the orchestra, for the musicians, for musicians, and and I think uh, uh, we had the possibility to do this project, and uh, this is um, just the beginning. No, yeah, that's, again, really cool stuff to be, you know, involved in that. And, you know, real quickly here, you know, conducting is fun and all, but what do you most look forward to this Saturday? Okay, uh, this, is, this is very important for me because uh, we are communicators. We, we have to communicate, as, as you know. And um, the music is, in, is written on, the pa on paper and it's necessary to, interp to interpret uh, these, these notes. And uh, I would like to invite everybody to the concert of Saturday because uh, we will do all we can to communicate the beauty of the music. Uh, we, we have a wonderful musical program from, the, uh, the, from r Russian composers and one piece of, by, written for, by me. Yes. No, that should be a lot of fun. And uh, unfortunately, we are out of time, but we thank you, Eddie, for making some time today with us. Thank you. Yeah, again, ladies and gentlemen, that was Latin Grammy award-winning composer and conductor, also artistic director and music professor in Costa Rica, Eddie Mora. Check him out in the Minot Symphony Orchestra this Saturday at 7 p.m. When we come back on the show, Parker's going to be talking a little bit MSU soccer in hosting their first round matchup in the NSIC tournament. And also Trevin will have a live action shot with a former MSU comm major. Don't go anywhere. You're watching MSU Inside Out.
Welcome back, everyone, to MSU Inside Out. If you're just joining us now, I'm your co-host, Janie Wunderlich. And I'm Cole Clementich. Moving forward in the show, we have a familiar face from the broadcasting department joining us with Trevin shortly. But before we get, but before we get to that, um, we're going to take a look at what's going on in the sports world with Parker. Parker, what do you have for us today? The Monite State volleyball season is nearing its end. There are only five games left before the season concludes next Saturday. The Beavers currently sit at the bottom of the NSIC standings with a 0-23 record on the season. It will be their worst season record in over 20 years if they are unable to secure a win before the season ends. However, the Beavers have two very good chances of getting a win this weekend. They host the 3-21 Bemidji State Beavers tomorrow night at 6. They will then host the 4-20 University of Minnesota Crookston Golden Eagles at 2 o'clock on Saturday for Family Day. The Minot State women's soccer team is poised to make an NSIC tournament appearance this fall. This is their second tournament appearance in as many years. Their 8-2-7 record this season sits only behind Minnesota State University Mankato and Bemidji State in the NSIC standings. The Beavers are currently in action down in Bismarck in a game with heavy seeding implications. A win against the University of Mary Marauders could move the Beavers up to the number two seed from their current number three spot. The Beavers' impressive season should guarantee them at least one home game when the NSIC tournament begins on Monday. The undefeated Minot State men's hockey team is back in action in a two-game series this weekend. The Beavers travel to Jamestown tomorrow to take on the University of Jamestown Jimmies in a 7 o'clock showdown between two top 11 teams. They will then host the Jimmies on Saturday at 345 at the Mesa Arena. The Beavers are currently the only team to beat Jamestown this season and will look to sweep them again this weekend. Guys, the Beavers men's hockey team has been completely dominant this year. How long do you think they can keep it up? Honestly, Parker, they could go on as long as they want. I mean, they're just phenomenal. They, they play hard, they play fast, they play well for Coach Chuck, and, you know, they, ju they just work on it. And, Parker, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes on for a long time. But, yeah, that's more good stuff there, Parker, so thank you. And with that being said, we move on now. Trevin is standing by with a former MSU comm major. You might remember him. Trevin, what do you have for us? Thank you, Cole. We have a familiar face here today. Another former Beaver making waves in the professional communication field. Multimedia reporter for KX News, Jordan Rodriguez, joins me now. Jordan, it's good to have you back in the studio. How's that new job been treating you? Uh, it's going good. It's keeping me busy, but, uh, you know, I love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. It's uh, taken me a lot of places that I definitely would have never been, like Dunsee, the, the International Peace Garden, uh, Beulah, places like that, where um, it's small town North Dakota. It's, it's, it's awesome. And, uh, everyone's been really nice at the station, and uh, yeah, you know, I can't beat it. I love it. I'm glad to hear that. So tell me what a normal day for you is like. All right, so a uh, normal day, that, that's an interesting question because, you know, everything kind of changes from day to day, but, um, you know, I'd show up to work around 9 o'clock. Then we have our morning meeting at 9.30 where we pitch our, our two to four stories. Uh, then from there, we reach out, try and contact the people, make our contacts, and once we do that, we go pack up everything, shoot it, everything we do on our own. We set up the cameras, we set up all the equipment, tear down, conduct the interviews, uh, come back, and then we edit everything. So everything from shooting to writing the script is, is us. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty busy day. Yeah. <laughs> so of the many stories that you've reported on, do you have one that kind of stands out more than the rest? Okay. I, I had a feeling this question was going to come, so I was thinking about it last night. Um, I think... My favorite would have been, I did a story in Berthold about a football player who um, unfortunately got a really bad injury, and he's uh, in a wheelchair for about six to nine months. Um, and being a, being a former student athlete, I know um, how much that stinks and how hard that is. And um, I don't know, that one that one's the one that kind of plucked my heartstrings and kind of got me tearing up a little bit during the interview, but it, it was a really cool story. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. So how has what you learned here at Minot State like, prepared you for the job field? Um, I mean, this is as real life as you can get. This setup that we have here, um, from the show to the stuff we learn in the classes, is second to none. It's, it really gets you ready for what you have to go out and do in the real world. And I noticed that um, when it came time to go live for my first shot or write my first story, um, there wasn't a whole lot of 
like there wasn't a big learning curve for me. Um, so I think really this, this program, this university gets you ready for everything. Yeah, definitely. I'd have to agree with you on that. Minot State, this program is just, just fantastic. Well, Jordan, thank you for joining us today. It's always good to see your face back in the studio. And yeah, thank you for your time. That is Jordan Rodriguez, multimedia reporter for KX News. Back to you, Cole. Yeah, Trevin, we might be a little biased, but uh, yeah, we love our department. And Janie, mm -hmm. Jordan is sure just do. awesome. He, what do you remember about being co-hosting with him last year? You know, it was always a good time. I do remember, since we have some time to kill, I do remember a certain instance where we came out of a break and we both just sat here for about <sighs> 10, 15, no, it probably wasn't that long, but it felt like that. And we were just looking yeah. at each other like who was supposed to talk. And we didn't. And then finally, Always I just prepared. started talking. But it was really embarrassing mm -hmm. in the moment. But looking back, it was probably one of the most fun times. So having Jordan here and even last week, having Emily, our other co-host from last year, it's just it's really fun having them back here in the yeah, here sure. in the studio. Yeah. But any other announcements, Cole, before we wrap up the show? Yes. So future reminders for you guys inside the damn podcast. No show on Monday due to MSU soccer first round matchup on Monday night. Yes, and along with that, next Thursday after our 5 o'clock show, we will be having MSU's Got Talent in the Beaver Dam starting at 7 p.m. MSU Life is providing free dinner for students. There's Rumor has it there's going to be some giveaways, too, throughout the show, and Buckshot may or may not be making an appearance. So really exciting stuff going on um, for Thursday. But thank you to everyone who uh, partook in the show, and that's a wrap for today, and we will see you guys all next week.